Hello, I'm Alex Vasquez from Evolutionary Athletics, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a uh, general preparation phase that I've been playing around with with uh, some of my clients and athletes that has yielded some good results. So just a brief overview, uh, the periodization template that I tend to follow is a general fitness phase or general preparation. Uh, from there, we move into maximal strength and then strength endurance and power development or power development and then we finish with maximal speed, velocity, and peaking. So today we're going to talk more about the general fitness program. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to prefer to keep people in that phase a little bit longer because uh, it will develop the basic fitness qualities like general strength and endurance which will support over time the development of the specific special strengths like maximal strength, power, reactive ability, and velocity. So this is non-specific fitness and this is all about base building. It's all about uh, improving someone's strength, improving their endurance of two foundational qualities uh, upon which speed and velocity and speed endurance and velocity endurance are built upon. So one of the methods that I like to use and has been very effective most recently has been the strength aerobic method um, as defined by Yuri Prokhorovsky. Um, this has been a very, very uh, exciting method to use with the clients and athletes that I work with. Basically speaking, we use two exercises. We pick one strength exercise and one endurance-based exercise. Uh, the strength exercise is performed for 80-90% of your one rep maximum. And you perform three sets of two to three reps. And these are performed in a cluster fashion. So you'll do a rep. Uh, for example, you'll unrack the bar, do one squat, rack the bar, shake out the limbs, then fatigue out for 10 seconds or so, 5-10 seconds, get back under the bar, unrack it, hit your next squat, rack it again, shake all the fatigue out, and then unrack the bar and perform one more repetition. So while the loads are kind of high, um, you're not really performing a lot of volume per individual set. Uh, you're letting the fatigue kind of you know, lead the system. This will allow you to be a little more explosive and make the whole strength aerobic method in general a little less fatiguing. Once we complete the three sets of two to three reps of the strength exercise, then you move to the endurance portion. Now in this portion, what I've been using is 40 to 50 percent of your estimated one rep max, two to four series of four sets of 15 reps. Now, the endurance movement, there's other variations where you can use plyometric exercises and stuff, but from my understanding, uh, this is the variant that actually I've been using with very good results, and I've been basically using uh, strength-based exercises. So I may use, for example, a kettlebell front squat and do three series of four sets of 15 reps. Generally speaking, we rest one to three minutes in between each set, and then a series is comprised of the four sets. So do a set, rest a minute, do a set, rest a minute, do a set, rest a minute, and then finish my fourth set of 15. At that point, you'd rest five to eight minutes. Um, I'm not super anal or picky about this. What I actually do is, with, I, you know, I listen to music when I train, so I would just rest for the duration of a song, which is you know, three and a half, four or five minutes or so. If it's metallic, it might be 15 minutes. But you rest the duration of one song, and then you perform series number two, and then series number three. So your third series, at that point, you would have done 12 sets of 15 repetitions. Uh, this can be very demanding. And the repetitions are executed slow and controlled. We're not looking for explosiveness, even though the weight's really light. We're looking for a nice controlled tempo and pace. So here's an example of a, some generic workouts. Uh, for example, if you're deadlifting 405 pounds, you might put 165 on the bar. You might perform three sets of three reps in the deadlift. And then you might grab a pair of 50 pound kettlebells and then perform three series of four sets of 15 reps. 
Uh, day two, you come back on Wednesday, you hit up the back squat, 175 on the bar, hit your three sets of three, and then perform an RDL with 95 pounds for three series, but four sets of 15 repetitions. And for example, I've actually used this program with clients of mine, and when I program it, uh, there's generally speaking, they're training three days a week, uh, alternating day one and day two. Other exercises that are thrown into the program would be like bench presses or push ups and then pull ups or body weight rows. Uh, keep in mind this is a general preparation phase, so uh, hence the emphasis on body weight type exercises. And for those, generally we're going two to three sets of eight to, eight to 15 reps, and they're included in every workout, and we train Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, during the interventions that uh, I have employed the strength aerobic method with, I have used no dietary interventions whatsoever as far as nutrition goes. Uh, the results, generally speaking, after a four-week block of something like this, uh, we see significant increases in hypertrophy, uh, especially uh, in the upper back as well as the thighs. Um, we tend to see quite a bit of significant fat loss, usually one to two inches taken off the waist, so hey, we can argue with getting bigger and leaner at the same time. Uh, body weight tends to actually not change very much during a phase like this, so we've actually seen people significantly increasing their muscle mass while significantly losing body fat. Generally speaking, um, just off of the pinch test, we've seen essentially 5 to 10 pounds of muscle with 5 to 10 pounds of fat loss, and then um, so that's muscle gain and fat loss without any dietary interventions. Uh, generally speaking, we've seen significant increases in strength um, as well as significant increases in endurance. So. Uh, we test various things for endurance. These are just general measures. We might see a decrease in mile time. Um, one of the VO2 max assessments I do is rowing 1,000 meters for time, and we see significant drops and things like that. Also, just generally speaking, the time to complete the workout decreases. So the rest intervals are set for one to three minutes per set. In the beginning, someone might take you know, one or two minutes in the beginning you know, the first series or so uh, of rest in between sets. And then from then on, it may take three minutes per set because I'll be honest with you, this workout's a little bit of a butt kicker. Well, over time, we actually see those rest intervals drop, so the time to complete the workout tends to significantly decrease. There's other options that are available. Uh, I've also used double kettlebell swings for two to three series of four sets of 20 to 30 repetitions. And then you could also do something like the Davies style GPP circuit, like a star jump, shuffle run, burpee, mountain climber, two to three series, two to three sets of uh, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So do your star jumps for 30 seconds, rest for 30. Shuffle run for 30, rest for 30. Burpees for 30, rest for 30, mountain climbers for 30, rest for 30. Repeat that circuit one to two more times, take your five to eight minute rest interval, and then perform one to two more series of that. Uh, this one looks fun and interesting to me, but to be honest, I have not actually played around with that one yet, so I can't really speak to its efficacy, but I think it would definitely be an effective method to play around with. So what do we do during the rest of the year? During the majority of the year, we're base building. We're trying to get stronger and in a way so that when we go into our special strength training phases to try to peak the athlete for the start of the season or peak them for the playoffs, uh, they have a solid enough base that we can really lay our on that strength and power. So with this in mind, uh, there is a thrower out there with the last name Bingusser. I've seen a few presentations from him about his training with Anatoly Bondarchuk. And he had stated that Bondarchuk tends to keep some form of general developmental exercise in the program year-round when he was training with him. And in this case, those lifts, so that would be your squats, your strength lifts, your squats, deadlift, bench press. Uh, they were all trained in the 60 to 80% intensity zone 
they were trained on a daily basis. Uh, sets and reps were constant, and the loads were based on the field. So if you came in feeling smashed, you might only hit 60% for three sets of three. If you're feeling powerful, you might do 80% for three sets of three. So with this idea in mind, I kind of felt like we could use this method if one wanted to and treat it as the assistants work in a special strength training block. And you could either use it as your assistants work after the special strength training methods, so train everything in one day, or you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, do like a special strength training method, and then on Tuesday, Thursday, you could hit up your general development exercises or the strength aerobic method. So here's an example of what a full day might look like. If you're using triphasic training by Cal Dietz, you might do your squats, six sets, dex tempo, 85%, two to four sets, one to three reps. And then if we're going French contrast style, you do your set of squats, then go and do your uh, single response counter movement jumps, two to four sets of three, then a kettlebell squat jump, two to four sets of three, and then hurl jump, two to four sets of four. Repeat that circuit of anywhere from two to four times. And then hit up your strength aerobic method. Maybe you're doing the deadlift for three sets of three afterwards at 70% intensity. And then follow that with your kettlebell front squat, two series, two to four sets of 15 repetitions. Another way that you can program it, if you're trying to incorporate it in your special strength training law, would you treat it to use it on the off days? So, for example, Monday, we might go try basic. Again, 85%, three sets of three. Uh, French contrast method, squat, 85% by three, counter movement jump for three reps, kettlebell jump squat, three reps, turtle jump, three reps, repeat the circuit three times. Tuesday, go into the strength aerobic method, maybe go 80% on the RDL, three sets of three, followed by a swing for three series of four sets of 20 repetitions. Thursday, go back into the triphasic training again, for squat at 75% for three sets of five, counter movement jump for three, kettlebell jump squat, hurdle jump. Again, repeat that circuit three times. And then finally on Friday, hit up the strength aerobic method again. I put 80% on the deadlift, on both the deadlift and the RDL. Honestly, as long as you're in that 60 to 80 range, you're doing okay. So I actually might back those down, even though I put 80 in there. Uh, probably 60 to 70% will probably be more common. Three sets of three, followed by your kettlebell front squat, two series, four sets, 15 reps. So these are some of the ways I would implement the strength aerobic method as a maintenance protocol to maintain the strength and fitness levels that we have developed in the off-season while we're trying to peak an athlete using special strength training methods like the triphasic training method.